Hello and welcome to part 9 of this Blazor blog series. I'm Patrick and today I will show you how to add, not really implement, but add a markdown editor to your blog. And this is also similar to the similar to the last part, pretty simple. Still I struggled a little bit with that because of the input text area component of a blazer but you will see this in a second before we start i really want to thank all my supporters now we've got three of them thank you bobby for buying me a coffee and if you want to buy me a coffee sometime then please check out the link in the video description and if you want to dive deeper into blazer web assembly check out my blazer web assembly full stack bootcamp on Udemy or here on YouTube, there is a two hour preview available. We will build an online browser game in this bootcamp. Lots of stuff going on there together with web API and entity framework. Feel free to check it out. But now let's build a markdown editor in your blog. And uh, we are already here at the create razor file. But before we change this, I want to show you what we are actually going to use. And this would be this beautiful library here, Mark Dick. This is a markdown, well, processor as they say here, which is common mark supply. And so if you don't know markdown yet, then maybe just check out this link here, common mark. It says it's a plain text format for writing structured documents based on formatting conventions from email and Usenet. And this was actually developed way back in 2004. And as you can see here, this is how it looks. So you can use the asterisk character, for instance, to write italic text or bold text, use the hash sign here for headings and so on. Links are supported images and so on, much more stuff. And it would be nice to use this text here, these strings, and our block will then interpret this stuff and make this text out of that. And for this, we will use this library here. And of course it is available on a NuGet, so, or as a NuGet package. So we go back to Visual Studio and first install this package. And we do that again in the client project. We can say manage NuGet packages, but first, of course, we have to stop the application. So now we can right click the client, manage NuGet packages. And here we enter mark dick, for instance. And there it already is by Alexandra Mutil. Really great stuff. Just install this thing and you're done. Of course, we say OK and we already have it in our, should be in our project file now. There it is. Include mark dig version 0.22. And now we save this and back to the create razor now. We simply use it by using mark dig okay and now down here what i want to do is i want to have a preview div so we got this div here already for the actual content and we enter the content and then down there or below this div i want to have another div so let's just add it real quick again with the class form a group and then a label for, let's call it content preview. And this is the content preview. And then we add another div this time with the ID content preview. And we add a height for that, but let me show you first what happens when we don't do this. Uh, we add the class form control again, like that. And then what we can do, of course, we could simply say new block post content. This would just be exactly the same as the content we enter in the text area above, but we can use markdown to, or markdick 
to turn this into HTML. And so Markdown is now available and we have this beautiful method here to HTML and we just add it here, right there. So Markdown to HTML, new blog post content. And that's already it actually. You know, this is the very, these are the very first steps to, to make this happen and let's run the application and then you will see how this looks. So .NET watch run. Okay, there it is. Maybe we can also just refresh the page here. We go to create and it doesn't work because the value cannot be null of the of the content string. So this is the first thing you may stumble upon. What we have to do is we have to go to the blog post model here and Mark Dick needs to have some content for the string. It cannot be null. So let's just set it to string empty by default. And now it is reloading. And we are already on the create page and now it works. We don't have an error. And let's say we want to write tests. We leave the text area and we see HTML here. Isn't that nice? And we can also use the asterisk again uh, for bold text. Leave the text area and here we see strong bold text. Now. That's already nice. It's HTML now, but we actually want to not see the HTML tags, right? We really want to see the results of our markdown text here. So we can do one more thing and back to the create razor. We just say markup string. And that's already it. As you can see, a string value that can be rendered as markup such as HTML and Blazor or .NET does this for us. So let's go back to the create razor file. And now we write test, leave the text area and we see test. And now we can also write bold text, leave the text area and we've got bold text. That's nice. Okay, now what happens if you write text down here and leave the text area? Whoops, okay, this doesn't look nice. So. The next thing we have to add is something to our diff here. And yes, I know never use inline styles, but I do it anyways. Let's add height 100% and test this again after it reloads. And you write test, you see that something is a bit strange here for now, but now I can enter as much text as I want, leave the text area. And now this diff expands with the size of our text here with the content. That's already nice. But what I do, but I really don't like here is that I have to leave the text area to update the diff here. It already works. We can use it like that and that's nice. But what I really want to do, I have, I want to see real time changes. So when I write something here, it should directly appear in the div. And for that, we have to dive a bit deeper into this control here because the input text area has this thing here, the bind value. And with bind value, we bind the content here, but we also bind the event on change. Now, if you would use the plain text area like that, the, just the HTML text area, we could say bind value and then new blog post content. And then we can also say which event should be bound for that value. So bind value and then event and the standard event is on change. This is done in the input text area component up here, but we could also say on input, make this maybe also a form control. And just like that, 
I think this should already work. Let's see. So we've got the text area here. Test, you see, this works just fine. We've got our markdown editor working on the fly. This is great, but I actually want to use a component. So there's one more option we can do. We can create an input text area by ourselves and inherit from this thing, kinda. So let's remove the text area again here. We use the input text area for now, but again, we inherit from this in a new shared component. So we add a razor component and call this block text area maybe. Remove everything and the very first thing we have to do is we have to inherit from Microsoft ASP.NET Core components forms and then input text area. And by the way, you can do this for every component. Here's the input text, for instance, and uh, we want to use the input text area, so we do it like that. And then we can just say, give me this text area, text area here. Uh, we close this already, and then we've got some some parameters. And if we have a look in the input text area, it inherits from input base. And here you can see we have stuff like additional attributes. We have the current value and the current value as string. We have the value changed event. Some stuff we should use in our own block text area razor file. So let's say regarding the attributes, we have this parameter here and we are going to use additional attributes for the class. Pretty important, I guess. It's the CSS class. And then we've got for bind the current value as string. Really important. And then the event, and this is crucial now because we change this again, default would be on change. But in our case, we now say on input and we are done. We've got our own component here that we can use in our blog post now in our create razor file. And the only thing we have to change is this thing here. So block text area. We also just bind the value, but the event now will be on input. So we wait until it's reloaded got the content and now this just works. Isn't that great? So we've got the tests, we've got bold texts, we've got titles, this is a title. Right, it works. Isn't that great? I really love this and, and it's, I don't know, I think 15 minutes in and we already got our markdown editor. Of course now when we save this, let's say markdown tests, markdown, we choose a, a file, maybe the .NET logo now, a beautiful, beautiful description with content in markdown. Let's just leave it like that. And we've got the text here. Let's hit create. this is not what we want, right? So we have to add this as well to the post razor file. And this is pretty simple because we can just copy this code here and then go to our post razor. And instead of just displaying the current post content, we use markdown again, of course it's the current this should be sufficient, current post, and then also using mark dick, save it. And now when this is reloading, 
we've got our markdown text. There it is. And that is it already. Isn't that crazy? So again, we used the markdig library here as a new get package so that we've got the reference here in our client project file. Then we went to the create razor. There it is. We don't have to pin it the create razor and then we changed or we added a content div for that. And of course there are a couple of ways to do this. We could add another column. So we have the content that we enter on the left and the result then on the right, or we could add a preview button. In that case, uh, we, we would not really need the on input event, but with the preview button, we can switch between the text area where we enter the content and the div where we see the result. And this is just a way where you can also learn to create your own text area component here. And this is what we did next. Then we created this block text area that looks exactly the same as the default input text area, but the event is now changed. We used the on input event here. Okay. And that was it. We did not have to change any code here in the code block was really just the HTML stuff. But of course we had to add the markdig editor. And then in the end, of course we have to add it here as well. And then we are done. All right. So again, thank you very much to my supporters for buying me a coffee. If you also want to support me a little, maybe you want to buy me a coffee as well. I'd really, really, really appreciate that as well as clicking the like button and subscribing to my channel. Of course, it does make a difference. And again, if you want to dive deeper into Blazor WebAssembly, feel free to have a look at my Blazor WebAssembly full stack bootcamp, where we build a classic online browser game where users can register, create units like knights, archers and mages and let these units fight against each other and uh, against other users, of course, to reach the first rank of the leaderboard. We use Web API, Entity Framework, JSON Web Tokens for authentication and a lot more in that project. The link is in the video description below or watch the two hour preview here on YouTube. Thank you very much for watching. I see you next time. Take care.